Hello everybody and welcome again to Talent Sprint for another video presentation on the banking sector. This time we are going to talk of one of the primary functions of the bank, namely remittances. In an earlier video, we have discussed what are the primary functions of a bank, namely which are the primary functions. They are acceptance of deposits, giving of loans, clearing of checks, issue of remittances. So issue of remittances is one of the major uh, functions of a bank and one of the primary functions of a bank. One of the primary functions of a bank is the issue of remittances. Remittances can be done in the following ways. Demand drafts, NEFT or the National Electronic Fund Transfer System, RTGS or the Real-Time Gross Settlement System, IMPS or the Immediate Payment Service System and Society for Worldwide International Financial Transactions that is called SWIFT. This is applicable only for international transactions. So we shall see about all these uh, uh, five or uh, five methods of remittances, demand drafts, NEFT, RT, uh, RTGS, IMPS and SWIFT in greater detail in the coming uh, uh, slides. So remittances as we know is done when a person is desirous of transferring money from one place to another or from one person to another. Of course, remittances can also be uh, transferred. Uh, remittances can also be uh, done through the issuance of checks, but that is a separate segment altogether. The check issuing is a separate segment altogether. So we are not going to talk of check issuance here because we have already dealt with what is a clearing house, how the checks are cleared, and how the National Payment Corporation is involved in the clearing of checks. What is MICR? What is uh, uh, the MICR code? All that we have seen in a separate video. For this, in this video, we are going to talk of the other forms of remittances, namely demand drafts, uh, the NEFT, RTGS, IMPS, and the SWIFT. Of course, SWIFT is only for international transactions. What is a demand draft? A demand draft is a negotiable instrument. Let us understand it's a negotiable instrument. A bank issues a DD or a demand draft to a client directing another branch of the same bank or sometimes another branch of the same group of banks to pay a certain sum of money to a particular payee. Why I said another branch of the same group of banks was until recently, until the 1st of April 2017, we had the State Bank of India and its associate banks. The State Bank of India could actually issue a draft on the associate banks and the associate banks could actually draw a branch, uh, draw a draft on the any of the State Bank of India branches. Of course, as of today, that system does not exist. So let us not talk of that. Let's understand that a demand draft is an order by a certain branch of a bank directing another branch of the same bank to ensure that a certain amount of money is paid to the payee. The payee is the person in whose favor the demand draft is drawn. To give you an example, the Banjara Hills branch of Punjab National Bank in Hyderabad could actually issue a DD favoring the Connaught Place branch of Punjab National Bank in Delhi saying that please pay Mr. ABC the sum of rupees 10,000 when it is presented. This is how a DD is given. So that is the uh, way or way of uh, present, uh, way of making a DD. A DD or a demand draft are orders of payment to another bank or another branch. Of course, another bank really does not come into existence now because the SBI group has since been dismantled. For example, an Indian overseas bank cannot draw a demand draft, uh, an Indian overseas bank branch cannot draw a demand draft on uh, a branch of Vijaya Bank. It is not possible. They can only draw demand drafts on their own branches. On their own branches only, demand drafts can be drawn. They can only be made specific payment to a specific party uh, a demand draft is not an open instrument it is payable only to the payee for whom it is intended in other words a demand draft cannot be transferred to another person like a check for example i can endorse a check when a check when i get a check in my name i and if it is not drawn if it is not crossed with the words account payee I can easily transfer the check to another person by endorsing it, by saying that please pay to 
A, B, C or order and I can sign on the reverse of the check and that A, B, C can go and deposit in its bank account. However, a demand draft cannot be transferred. It is not a transferable instrument. A demand draft when it is drawn, it is drawn in favor of a specific party only and the payment can be made only to the payee's account. It cannot be paid to anybody else. That is the meaning of the word, well, that is the meaning of the sentence saying that they can be made only payable to a specific party. It cannot be transferred to another third party at all. Demand draft is a prepaid negotiable instrument. Why it is prepaid? Because only when the drawer or the account holder has sufficient balance in his account, then only the bank can authorize issuance of a demand draft. So to that extent, it is a prepaid arrangement. The bank or the branch issuing the uh, demand draft has already got money into his hands and that after that getting the money into his hands, they ask the other branch of the bank to pay money to the payee. So to that extent, it is a prepaid negotiable instrument. It, the, the bank undertakes to pay the payee on presentation. A demand draft is an undertaking by the bank to pay the payee on presentation. That means when the payee presents the draft to the payee branch, then the pay payee branch has to make the payment. To collect the payment, the beneficiary has to deposit in his account. Normally, demand drafts are not allowed to be encashed or in other words, cash will not be given to the uh, payee of a demand draft. It has to go through the banking system only. So to that extent, the beneficiary has to deposit the draft in his bank account and the bank account will then get it cleared and credit the amount to the depositor's account. DD uh, can be made payable in, in INR, that is Indian rupees or in foreign currency also. For example, a bank of a branch, uh, sorry, a branch of State Bank of India in Delhi can issue a DD on a branch of State Bank of India in London. And to that extent, the London branch will not be able to pay rupees. They will have to make, make the DD in British pounds. So the DD can be made in either Indian rupees or in foreign currency as well. But of course, with the passage of time and with the increasing technology that is being implemented by the banks, foreign DDs have gone out of existence virtually. These days, foreign remittances take place by what we are going to see a little while later, namely the SWIFT, Society for Worldwide International Financial Transactions, in which online transfers, electronic transfers will be done. So DD in foreign currency is slowly but surely becoming extinct. So DD can, however, as per law, can be made either in Indian national rupees or the in foreign currency as well. DD is signed by the banker while a check is signed by the account holder. This is an important point of difference between a demand draft and a check. A DD is signed by the banker through his authorized representative. It could be the branch manager or it could be an assistant manager or a, or a senior manager. Whoever is authorized to sign a bank demand draft signs the demand draft. While in the case of a check, the check is actually signed by the account holder himself. That is about DD. Now we move to the next uh, uh, way of remittance that is called the NEFT. NEFT stands for National Electronic Fund Transfer. As you can see, the electronic method of transferring funds is used in NEFT. Money can be transferred from one bank to another within the country, anywhere within the country in a matter of hours. I can transfer money from my account with HDFC Bank to, uh, to somebody else's account let's say with ICICI Bank in a matter of just a few hours using the National Electronic Fund Transfer System. The, the fund actually gets debited to my account with HDFC Bank, then it is transferred to ICICI Bank's server, which in, which in turn receives the money and passes it on to the payee's account. And all this is done electronically in a matter of just a few hours. Of course, the technology has so much imp improved in recent times that that money transfer does not take even hours. It is probably done in a matter of a few minutes. I personally have had the experience of transferring money on NEFT where the payee has got money in less than 15 minutes time. So NEFT is a great way of transferring funds when you want to transfer electronically. It is done online from the customer's bank account by logging on to net banking.
NEFT is for amounts from rupee 1 to rupees 10 lakhs. NEFT currently is allowed for transfers from rupee 1 to rupee 10 lakhs. It is done in branches, it is done in batches of 25 transactions from 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. from Monday to Saturday. That means from Monday to Saturday, any day of the week, any day of the day from any day of the week from 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., you can do NEFT transfers sitting at your home or office using your bank, using the net banking facility in your bank account and transfer money. And this transfer is done in batches of 25 transactions each. If you are lucky, as I was once, as I told you, if, you, if your transfer is probably the 25th in that batch, it will go through very immediately. Otherwise, it may take a matter of just a few hours. On Sunday, of course, NEFT transactions are not permitted. And this, as I told you, NEFT is allowed for amounts between 1 rupee and 10 lakh rupees. The next way of remittance is the RTGS, the real-time gross settlement. RTGS is the facility introduced by Reserve Bank of India to enable large transactions to take place within a matter of minutes. It is supposed to be transferred in real time. That is why it's called real time gross settlement or real time gross settlement is the fastest way of transferring money today in the country. Funds are transferred through internet banking from one account to another in a matter of minutes. Unlike NEFT where it is done in batches of 25 transactions, RTGS transactions are processed and dispatched individually. That means when I do an RTGS transaction, that transaction is passed through immediately and individually. It, it, the bank does not wait for a batch of 25 transactions and so on. The RTGS is the most popular amongst the corporate accounts because it involves a large amount of money transfer. It involves big customers. It involves huge amounts of money. So the transfer has to be necessary. His, the transfer has to be necessarily done in a matter of minutes. So it is very popular amongst corporate uh, accounts, and they resort to RTGS almost every day of the week. The minimum amount of RTGS transactions is rupees two lakhs. For less than two lakhs transactions, you have to go through the NEFT system. However, for two lakhs and without any maximum limit. You can, you can go through the RTGS. IMPS is a very latest de uh, development in the field of online remittances. It stands for immediate payment service. It is done through the mobile banking. It is done instantly through the National Payment Corporation of India. It is done 24-7 or 24 bar 7. It is done on all days of the week through internet banking, even on bank holidays. There is no holiday for uh, uh, IMPS unlike NEFT and RTGS which are not done on Sundays. Transfer is done in a matter of minutes and intimation is sent to the payee's mobile number. The important thing to note here is the payee should have a mobile number then only the intimation of transfer will go to him. So transfer is done, is, is done in just a matter of minutes. It doesn't take more than a few minutes for the IMPS transfer to go through. As, again as I told you it is done electronically the account with one bank is debited. The other bank get, gets the credit immediately through the electronic fund transfer system. And it, ten, it in turn in credits the account of the payee. All this is done in a matter of minutes. Mobile money identifier or MMID is a seven digit code issued by a participating bank to their mobile banking registered customers for availing IMPS service as a beneficiary. Every member of a bank which is offering the IMPS service will have a seven digit code issued by the participating bank uh, uh, that is called the mobile money identifier and that will be used in the IMPS transactions. When we are talking of NEFT, RTGS and IMPS, uh, when, we, when we talk of the, all these forms of electronic transfers, one important thing which comes to the uh, play is what is known as an IFC code. For any online transactions or any online remittance transactions, an IFSC code is a must. IFSC stands for Indian Financial System Code, IFSC. Each branch and each bank has got its unique IFSC, I, IFSC code. The IFSC is mandatory for all transactions done online. The IFSC is given to all banks and all branches. The IFSC or the Indian Financial System Code is 11 character code where the first four are for the bank name, the next six for the branch code 
and one extra code is for zero. For example, if you are banking with a particular branch of HDFC bank and whose code is let's say 206, some number comes to my mind 206, then the HDFC code, will, the IFFC code of that branch will be HDFC 000206. That means there are 11 transactions, 11, uh, one extra number is added zero just to just to ensure that, that if the branches have more than a four digit code, then they'll have to put in an extra uh, uh, digit code now. For, for example, now probably SBI with its 24,000 branches will have to use that extra code. So this is a 11 digit character code and this IFSC has to be used in all transactions, all transactions involving online fund transfer. We now come to the last way of remittance of uh, online remittances that is called the SWIFT. SWIFT is mainly used for international transactions. SWIFT denotes Society for Worldwide International Financial Transactions. Worldwide International Financial Transactions. A bank identifier code is also given by the International Standards Organization. And a business entity identifier is also given by the International Standards Organization. So SWIFT is the fastest method of transferring money from one country to another. If you have a SWIFT code and if that branch has got a bank identification number or the bank identification code and if you also have a BEI, BEI the business ent ent entity identifier, you can transfer money from India to en any foreign country which is of course approved by the uh, government of India and RBI, there are certain countries to which you cannot transfer funds, there are certain banned list items also. Uh, but other than that, for example, to countries like United States, UK, Germany, France, Japan, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, all these places you can transfer money in a matter of a few hours. It may not take even 24 hours. It will be done through the SWIFT system, the Society for Worldwide International Financial S Transactions. So these are the five ways of remittances which have been assigned to banks and which banks you know with remittances being one of the primary functions of a bank all these five are very very essential and important and of course the demand draft is still in the physical form uh, slowly but steadily demand draft is going out of circulation let me add that there are only certain government departments and certain institutions which need a demand draft uh, in a hard copy format. Uh, otherwise, most institutions, most organizations, most uh, commercial transactions have all switched to the digital mode. And when they switch to the digital mode, online transfers are essential. And on for online transfers to take place, an IFSC code is very, very essential. And then online transfer is done through net banking, through the NEFT, the National Electronic Fund Transfer, or through the RTGS, the Real-Time Gross Settlement System, or through SWIFT, which is the uh, Society for Worldwide Financial Transactions, or through IMPS, which is the Immediate Payment Service. As we have seen, RTGS and NEFT are done on work days, on working days from Monday to Saturday. IMPS is available 24 bar 7 without any interruption on bank holidays. And of course, the SWIFT is also done from Monday to Friday. SWIFT transactions do not happen on Saturdays and Sundays because Saturdays and Sundays most international markets are closed and that's the reason why SWIFT cannot have a function on Saturdays and Sundays. So this kind of remittances have revolutionized the whole system of remittances in the Indian banking system. Gone are the days when we used to send a check for, written from Chennai, put it in a cover put it, uh, send it through ordinary post and that check will reach the payee's account. Uh, the, uh, that check will reach the, reach the payee, let us say in Madurai, after 15 days. And that payee has to deposit in his account. Then the check will be sent for collection to the branch in Chennai. They will give credit to the Madurai branch. All this process, uh, I remember in the olden days, used to take nearly 30 to 35 days for an outstation check to be realized. Today, it is possible to transfer money from Chennai to Madurai within a, minute, within a matter of 30 to 45 minutes. That is how the uh, revolution has taken place in the field of remittance, just as in other fields, just, in all, just as in all the fields of banking, 
remittance also has undergone a thorough sea change and uh, uh, more and more people are getting used to this electronic fund transfer system. Today, you can pay fees online, you can pay your school and college fees online, you can pay your electricity bills online, you can pay property taxes online, you can pay your um, uh, purchase bills online, you can shop online thanks to the e-commerce businesses like Amazon, Flipkart, eBay, etc. Et you can actually uh, shop online, you can make payment to uh, for your credit cards online, so everything is done online. And online means internet banking. And online means internet banking, which is used and the funds are transferred either through what is known as a NEFT or through an RTGS or through an IMPS. So it is very easy for money, money to be transferred from one place to another, from one person to another, from one organization to another. An organization can pay the salaries of his employees stationed at different locations all with the click of a button all with the click of a mouse, as, as I must say. The, for example, an organization could have employees working in, let's say, 30 locations across the country. They can just issue one request to the bank to debit their account and credit the accounts of these 30 different employees across 30 different locations, all in a matter of minutes. That is how fast and uh, efficient the uh, remittance system in, in the Indian banking has become and uh, more and more Indians are taking advantage of it. So that's all I have for you in this video on remittances. I hope you enjoyed watching it. It's bye from me. It's bye from me for now and until I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.